Hello, children of God. Have you ever broken something? I've broken a lot of things. In fact, just recently, I broke this poor, sad jar of jam. I dropped it and it shattered into a whole bunch of pieces. I mean, I put it in a bag for safety, but you can see that there's no way I'm putting this back together. As a result of dropping it, consequence was no more jam. I'm a very sad, broken, and dangerous, sharp glass jar. I can't fix it. There's nothing I can do. Well, the only way I can make this situation any better is if I just get a whole new jar of jam. It's fresh, it's not broken, it's new, I have jam again. Now, breaking a jar of jam might not seem like that important of a thing, right? Not that consequential in the grand scheme of our lives, but there are other times where we might mess something up really bad and it still seems like it's hopeless and there's nothing we can do about it. Well, a lot of times there is nothing we can do, but God can change and redeem even the most shattered of circumstances. This kind of reminds me of a big mistake made by the very first people, Adam and Eve. And if you're familiar with the story, Satan came and tempted them to sin. Came disguised as a serpent to Eve and said, you know, did God really tell you you shouldn't eat of that tree? Because in fact, it'll be pretty awesome if you do. It'll make you like God. Well, she believed him and he was deceived. So she ate the fruit, then she shared it with Adam. And when God found out what they had done, because of course you can't keep anything from him, they were punished. There were consequences for their sin. They disobeyed God and did what was wrong. And they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And ever after that, they had to live lives of difficulty. And because of that, we all inherit that sin too. We're born sinful because of what they did. And there's sadness and sorrow and evil in the world. And we can't fix it. It's completely shattered. Well, that might seem like kind of a bleak and hopeless story, except for the last part of Genesis chapter three, where God is explaining that yes, there are punishments and consequences for this sin. And he says something to the serpent, to that great deceiver. He says, well, you will strike the heel of the woman, but your head will be crushed basically of mankind, that the snake would bite the heel, but that same heel of man would crush the snake. Now that might seem a little bit confusing. How is that hopeful at all? Well, that is reminding us that God made a promise. It wasn't hopeless. It wasn't the end. Yes, we sinned, we messed up. Ever after that, there would be punishment and consequences. Bad things would happen, but someone would come greater than that serpent would utterly destroy him. That would be someone born of a woman, born as a man, living as a man, dying as a man, who is actually God. And of course, that would be Jesus. So even in that first fall, that first sin, there's hope. God said, don't worry, I know you messed it up, but I'm going to fix it. You broke the jam jar. I'm going to replace it. Because in fact, Jesus took on himself the consequence of sin. He suffered, suffered the sin and death that we deserve so that we could be given new life. Because of Jesus, there is hope. Because of him, we know that sin won't win in the end, that death is not forever, that we can have eternal life and hope with him. And so we know no matter what we do, 
no matter how many mistakes we make, he can fix us. He can put us together again. In fact, give us a whole new life. He can redeem us and help us and change us. And that gives us hope. Jesus wins in the end. He has defeated death. And he will give us new life. Has already given us new life. And someday will return for us again. And we will live with him forever. That's good news. Even in the midst of a sinful, sad situation. Why don't we pray and give thanks for God? Give thanks to God for that right now. Dear God, thank you for the hope of salvation. Thank you for redeeming our broken lives and fixing things even when we mess up. Thank you for the hope we have in you. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. There is hope. Now, go make some disciples. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time.